Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We like new things, don't we? Actually, you like new things? That's right, Henry. We like new things. New toys, one of the things that maybe you're looking forward to on Christmas. A new gadget, I don't know about you, my thing has always been electronics. Whenever I got a new electronic thing, I just liked messing with it and figuring it out and playing with it. Maybe for you it's a new car. Maybe the new car smell does it for you. You get in there and you just think, Ooh, all my problems are gone. This is going to last me forever until it doesn't. Or a new outfit that looks really good that you've been wanting to wear. You got it for Christmas. We like new things. They just don't hit quite like the hand-me-downs from your older sibling or a used thing from a friend. We want the new thing. Well, the news today that I have for you is that something new is coming. And it's the greatest new thing you'll ever have been given or will be given. Hear ye, hear ye, something new is coming. I'm sorry, I forgot my bell. A new beginning, right? If you look at the first words of our gospel reading today, they're the very first words of the gospel of Mark. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Something new is happening. Something new is coming. The start of the New Testament are the Gospels. The four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were written because God is up to something new and He wants you to know about it. That's why the first thing in Mark's Gospel is that he is, for the first time in hundreds of years, sending a prophet with his words to prepare you for this new thing that is coming. To make straight the path. For the mountains to be laid low and the valleys to be brought to level. The words of Isaiah say in our Old Testament reading today. Now, John the Baptist was sent and he was preaching in the literal wilderness. But the wilderness in the scriptures is also often a place of spiritual wandering and unrest. Just like God led his people in the Old Testament through the wilderness to the promised land, so too out of the wilderness we must come. And so God sends a prophet with his words, something new is happening. The king who's been promised of old, all the way back in the Garden of Eden, the offspring of Eve, the promised Messiah who is going to set everything right is here. He is coming soon. So John the Baptist went with these words to the people of God, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he gave them a baptism of repentance, urging them to confess their sins. Because they don't know quite yet, but as his church we do, where Christ is going to make his dwelling place is in the heart of his people. The way must be prepared into your heart, and for that it begins with dying to ourselves, confessing and repenting of our sins throwing ourselves at the mercy of our God. And the word of the Lord comes out today, Hear ye, hear ye, God is up to something new. What is this new thing that God is about to bring? He is sending the Lord, the one who's going to make a lot of changes who's going to bring about a new testament, a new covenant, 
between mankind and God, one that is no longer defined by blood and sacrifice, but by mercy, by grace, by forgiveness. Dear friends in Christ, we're in the season of Advent, and Advent is a fitting time to contemplate what's mentioned in our gospel, baptism. If you turn to the front of your bulletin, you'll see right before the invocation, and maybe you make the sign of the cross, maybe you don't, it's okay, you don't have to. But I want you to know that when you look around and see people doing that, what they're doing, they're remembering their baptism. We're beginning our gathering in the name that we are all brought together in, in the name that has been sealed upon us in our baptism. It's a reminder of where the new thing began for us. You see, in baptism, you and I were given and are continually given this new thing that God is coming to do. In baptism, you are given new lives, a new relationship with God. You actually become a new creation, no longer an enemy of God, dead in your sins, but a child of God, washed clean, made new. From a perishable life to an imperishable life that death no longer has dominion over. Just went to a funeral on Friday for a friend of Marissa's. Her father passed away. But you know what the focus of his funeral was? His baptism. Because what his baptism meant is that death is not victorious. This new thing that God is doing is. Hear ye, hear ye. God is making you new. You see, baptism gives us a new relationship with God unlike anything before. And John's baptism was a precursor for the one that you and I received. His baptism was just for the repentance of sin. A good thing, but not the full new thing God has come to do in Jesus. The Lord that is coming, the way that is being prepared is so that Christ can not only send His Holy Spirit so that you confess your sins, but so that you have faith in what He will do so that your sins are forgiven. So that you believe that promise when it is given to you. A promise sealed in your baptism. God staked his name on it. In that baptism, everything changes. That is the new news that John the Baptist is crying out in the wilderness for. That now God is doing something new. He is sending His Son to claim you as His own. He is sending His Son to make you new. To wash you clean. To kill you and make you alive. In His Son, Jesus Christ. In this new relationship, this new thing God is doing in His Son, Jesus. You have a new relationship with God, one defined by the mercy and forgiveness won through the one whom He's sending, His Son, Jesus. These are the gifts that have been given to you when you received this new thing that God is doing. So this Advent, as we prepare our hearts to receive the birth of our Lord Jesus and all that He has come to do, just as John was sent to prepare the people of God to receive their Lord all those years ago, 
and to prepare them to receive the message he came with. So now his words are for us, to prepare us, to lay low the mountains in our heart of ego, of pride, of self-sufficiency, of I'm okay, I'm pretty good, and to raise up the valleys of despair and hopelessness. Because a king is coming. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The king is coming. God is doing something new. No longer does he come to his people in wrath, stayed only by the blood of the sacrifices in the temple. But now he sends his son in mercy. He sends his son to make you new. Therefore, let us examine ourselves today and in the weeks to come, not only so that we may be prepared by the grace of our Lord's Holy Spirit for the promise of the newborn Savior we celebrate at Christmas, but also so that we may be prepared to receive, as our epistle reading stated, that He's coming back that we await the advent, the consummation of all these new things that have begun in Jesus when He returns. Because He will. And as His people who have been made new, no longer dead in our trespasses and sins, but alive in Christ Jesus, beloved children of God, we await that day with eagerness and hope just like his people awaited his arrival all those years ago. Dear friends in Christ, hear ye, hear ye. He is coming to make all things new. He is coming to finish this new thing he started when he sent John with his words to his people, the complete redemption into new and eternal life for His people, for you. Until then, like His people in the Old Testament, we hold fast in faith, clinging to the words He sends to us, the words He sent to us today. He is coming soon. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in this promise that your king is coming back to finish what he started, your full and complete redemption, and to bring you to a new heavens and a new earth. Until then, abide in his peace. Amen.